Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Dark Souls Remastered. This time I'm going to show you where all of the miracles are in the game. There are a total of 23 miracles, many of which are hidden behind covenants or various NPCs and vendors. There are very few that you actually just find laying around. The way this guide will work is I will first show you the miracles that you can pick up off of corpses or out of treasure chests, and then I will get into those given to you by NPCs and covenants, and then finally, vendors. If you're looking for a specific spell, please check the video description for timestamps, and you can just control F and look up a spell and a timestamp will be there for you. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have a twofer. We have Bountiful Sunlight and Soothing Sunlight. Each one dropped from one of these two piazzas found in the Duke's Archives prison, right near Big Hat Logan's cell. They won't aggro to you, you could actually sit here and just listen to them weep if you'd like, but one drops Bountiful Sunlight and the other drops Soothing Sunlight, so be sure to kill these. These are kill once enemies, so they won't show up again after you loot these miracles. Next up, we have Great Magic Barrier. This is found in one of the trees inside of Ash Lake, so it's the second big tree that you encounter. Once you're inside, you can leave through another pathway. This is also accessible from the beach, but I find this to be a bit easier. And then once you're walking along this little path, you want to be very careful and you want to drop off of this path into a log very, very carefully. And then once inside, you want to turn around and head back into the tree and you'll find a corpse with great magic barrier on it on top of one of the mushrooms. Next up, we have Sunlight Blade. This one takes a little bit of work to get. In the catacombs, you want to keep adventuring until you find this breakable wall. Uh, you will have to go through this area in order to progress through the catacombs, provided you're not skipping anything. Once you make your way down and kill the skeletons, you want to walk through the big doorway. And then at the far end of this hallway is going to be a big skeleton that drops from the ceiling, just like that. It scares the crap out of me every time. And you can dispatch him pretty easily, as long as you have an upgraded divine weapon or just an upgraded raw weapon. Inside of this sarcophagus is a ring. This is the Dark Moon Seance Ring. You want to bring this ring with you back to Anorlando to the Dark Moon Tomb Bonfire. You then want to wear the ring in front of the statue of Gwyn to reveal an illusory wall. This illusory wall only goes away if you're wearing this ring. It's not a regular illusory wall that you can just cut through. At the bottom of this newly revealed staircase will be a fog wall, and behind this fog wall is Dark Sun Gwendolyn, a boss. Dark Sun Gwendolyn is also the Covenant Master of the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant, which we will need for another miracle later on. After defeating Dark Sun Gwendolyn, the illusion in Anorlando breaks, including in this infinite hallway. And then at the end of this infinite hallway, there will be a chest in front of Gwyn's tomb, and inside of this chest will be Sunlight Blade. I want to mention that you do need to not fight Dark Sun Gwendolyn in order to join and level up the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant for the Dark Moon Blade Miracle later on. But I wanted to cover this now since it's technically a miracle that you just get out of a chest. Back in the catacombs, we're going to get the Tranquil Walk of Peace. So after you pick up the Dark Moon Seance Ring, you want to backtrack a little bit and there will be a broken wall that you can walk through. And again, this is an area that you're going to have to go through anyway as long as you're sort of collecting everything. So this is the open doorway that we're going to walk through. And then as we sort of progress through this little area, we're going to have some pretty low ceilings. We're going to eventually encounter a pyromancer. And in the room with the pyromancer, there will be some skeletons. So either equip a divine weapon and take out the skeletons before the pyromancer, or just try to take them all out as quickly as possible. It's in the next room here. Also in this room with the Pyromancer is a ladder, and that ladder is what we need. So dispatch the Pyromancer as quickly as you can, and then kill this skeleton. And if you have a Divine Weapon, they go down without needing to kill the Pyromancer. Um, but otherwise, you will need to kill it. I guess it's a Necromancer more than anything. I always confuse those two words, <laughs> even though I know what they mean. Anyway, there is a ladder here sort of tucked into this wall that we need to walk up. And through this room are going to be a bunch of booby trap statues that shoot spikes out at us. So be sure to have your shield up as you're walking through here, or do your best to roll th past the statues or through the spikes. There's a corpse in this room with the Tranquil Walk of Peace Miracle on it. Next up, we have the Vow of Silence. The Vow of Silence can be found in the Painted World of Ariamis, but you need to get the Annex Key from the Aqueduct or under the well with all the Bone Wheel Skeletons first. 
Once you have the annex key, you can now open this door that leads to the sort of upper area, or side area, I guess, of the painted world. Once out here, you want to start turning the corners, go outside the door, and then turn left, and there will be a staircase with a big bloated hollow that is shooting fireballs at you. Take care of him. If you kill these things with fire weapons or a fire enchanted weapon, uh, they will not spray their toxic poison. Otherwise, you just gotta kill them and back out. There is a corpse up here that you need to be very careful looting, but this has it out of silence. But once you sort of make it up here, the crow demons will start swarming you. So you gotta be careful. Next, let's start talking about the Covenant Miracles, starting with the Blades of the Dark Moon and the Dark Moon Blade Miracle. Kind of a mouthful. In order to join the Blades of the Dark Moon, you need to reach Dark Sun Gwendolyn's Fog Wall, but instead of going through and facing him as a boss, you want to kneel on the carpet in front of the Fog Wall. Upon accepting the Covenant and joining, you will receive a Blue Eye Orb as well as a Ring. The Blue Eye Orb can be used anywhere in the world to invade the worlds of the Guilty. Equipping the ring while in Anor Londo will act as sort of like an auto-invasion mechanic similar to the Forest Hunter's Covenant. For this covenant, you need to kill guilty players, and guilty is a weird term that encompasses a lot of things, but basically you need to invade worlds using the Blue Eye Orb or the ring, and then upon killing the host of that world, your target, you will receive a souvenir of reprisal. So feel free to invade anywhere in the world using the Blue Eye Orb, I will warn you though, this is a bit of a dead covenant, and invasions are not going to happen very often. But, just like everything else, you can farm the souvenirs of reprisal offline by going into the painted world and killing the crow demons. They have a decent chance of dropping them. It's uncommon, but it will happen. There's only about five or six of the crows in the world at any one time, so the farming can get a little long. But once you have 10 souvenirs of reprisal, return to Gwendolyn and give him all 10. In exchange, he will award you the Dark Moon Blade Miracle. It's a long one, but that's how you get it. Next, let's talk about the Gravelord Servant Covenant. This is a really well-hidden covenant in the game, and you find it in the catacombs. Fair warning, though, you need at least one Eye of Death in your inventory. Eyes of Death are scattered throughout the world on corpses, and they also drop from the basilisks found in the depths as well as the Great Hollow. In the catacombs, in one of the final sections, you want to head indoors, and then you will find a prowling demon guarding a corpse that actually has three Eyes of Death on it. So you can enter the Covenant right here. The prowling demon was also guarding a sarcophagus that is sort of pushed out of its little grave here. And as long as you have at least one Eye of Death in your inventory, after hopping into the sarcophagus, you will eventually be taken away. It does take a while, but just sit there and I promise you it'll happen. Once here, you can pray to Nido. He has to be alive though. If you kill him as a boss, this is not possible to do. You'll have to wait till the next new game cycle. But praying to Nido allows you to join the Gravelord Servant Covenant and you receive the Gravelord Sword Dance Miracle. Next, you need to farm 10 Eyes of Death. If you already have 10, great, you can do this all in one shot. But like I said before, they drop from the Basilisks down in the depths as well as the Great Hollow. It's a pretty good drop rate. You shouldn't have to farm too long. Once you have 10, go ahead and give them all to Nido, and then you will get the Gravelord Great Sword Dance Miracle after doing that. Next, let's talk about the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant. In order to join this covenant, you want to go to the Hellkite Bridge and then just stand here and wait a little while, and eventually the Hellkite Drake will drop down onto the bridge. Once that happens, run past him, and you can light the bonfire on the other side and rest at it to reset the Drake. One very, very important thing to note about the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant is that it has a faith requirement of 25, but you can drop that faith requirement by five points for every single boss you kill with another player when you use your white sign soapstone. So whenever somebody invites you into their world and summons you into their world and you kill a boss with them, it drops the faith requirement for this covenant by five, meaning you can kill five bosses with other players as long as you are the white phantom and join this covenant with zero faith. Upon joining the covenant, you'll get the lightning spear miracle. And then we need to go farm sunlight metals. There's a couple ways to do this. The online method is to use your white sign soapstone, and as long as you are in the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, 
you will then be summoned as a gold warrior of sunlight in other people's worlds. Upon killing a boss as a gold phantom, you will receive a sunlight medal. So this is the most common way to do it, just go help people while you're in the covenant. However, the other interesting thing to note is that if someone else in your party is in the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant, you will still get a Sunlight Medal, even if you are not. So this host here, Mommy, this Havel, giant head, Black Knight Halberd wielding host, he was in the Warriors of Sunlight, and because we killed a boss in his world, I received a Sunlight Medal. So that's one way to do it. The offline method is to farm the Chaos Bugs down in the Demon Ruins Lost Isolith Shortcut area. These guys have a decent chance of dropping Sunlight Medals. You may have to farm here for a little while, but luckily there's a bonfire nearby in Demon Ruins that allows you quick access to these guys. But as you can see here, I killed all of them in this shortcut area, and I'm only about to get one Sunlight Medal. So I recommend equipping the Gold Covetous Serpent Ring, as well as the Symbol of Avarice for your helm, and that should increase your item discovery a decent amount, and having 10 Soft Humanity does as well. Once you have 10 Sunlight Medals, head back to the altar and offer them so you get the Great Lightning Spear Miracle. Additionally, in order to get the Sunlight Spear Miracle, we need to have killed Lord Gwyn and beaten the game and then returned here in New Game Plus. We can then offer the Soul of Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, to the altar, and then we will get the Sunlight Spear Miracle. So it's a bit of a hidden miracle in there. As long as you have the Solar Gwyn and 10 Sunlight Medals, you'll get everything from this Covenant. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the vendors that sell miracles. First up is Oswald of Kareem, the Pardoner. He sells Karmic Justice. Oswald of Kareem can be found immediately after the Gargoyles boss fight, as long as you have rang the Bell of Awakening in this Bell Tower. He will appear once you do that. You can purchase Karmic Justice from him for a measly 40,000 souls. Next, let's talk about Siegmeier of Katarina. He's not exactly a vendor, but he does give a miracle. In Anorlando, once you make it up to the rooftops of the main section of the city, you will find Siegmeier in this little spire area, and he is run up against a challenge. In this room, there are a bunch of silver knights, but they shouldn't be too difficult for you at this point, as long as you know how to parry them. Once you've killed all of them, go ahead and speak with Siegmeier again, and then you can leave. He will give you the tiny being drink here, but he's going to give you something else once you return to Firelink Shrine afterwards. In Firelink Shrine, he'll be standing here as long as you've, you know, rescued him, and then he will ask you if it was you that opened the gate at Sen's Fortress. As long as you say yes to this question, he will give you the Emit Force Miracle. If you say no, he won't, and then you'll have to wait for New Game Plus. So it's very important that you say yes to that question. The final NPC we're going to speak about is Rhea of Thorland. Rhea sells every miracle in the game that every other miracle vendor sells, so there's no point even talking about anybody else. Rhea can be found in the Tomb of the Giants as long as you have killed the Capra Demon. After killing the Capra Demon, she will show up in Firelink Shrine, and then you don't even have to talk to her there, but if you talk to Petrus, he will then escort the party down to the Tomb of the Giants. At the first bonfire, you will find Patches the Hyena shortly after. He will kick you down into this pit, and then you will find Rhea of Thorland here. Upon rescuing her by killing Vince and Nico, who were just a little bit further in the tunnel, they're not too hard to kill, but you do have to watch out when they try to gang up on you. After you kill them, you want to speak to Rhea again, and then she will reward you with the Replenishment Miracle. So you don't actually buy this one from her, it's just a reward. After doing this, and proceeding through the rest of the Tomb of the Giants, when you warp back to Firelink Shrine, you'll find Petrus, and if you speak with him, he will basically fess up to abandoning Rhea of Thorland, but you want to kill him. You want to kill him because if you kill pretty much any other boss after this point, he will come up here and kill Rhea, preventing you from buying any of her miracles. But as long as you kill him, she'll stay alive here until you purchase everything. She sells as her unique offerings, Great Heal, Magic Barrier, and Wrath of the Gods. She also sells Force, Great Heal Excerpt, Heal, Homeward, and Seek Guidance. However, those spells are also sold by Petrus of Thorland, as well as Patches the Hyena. So you don't need to talk to them, you don't need to deal with them. Rhea is your gal. She has the rest of the miracles in the game. And that's it. That's all of the miracles in Dark Souls Remastered. They are all required for the trophy, so you're going to have your work cut out for you. It's a little frustrating that a lot of them are behind covenants that are sort of hard to grind up. 
especially the Darkmoon Blade Covenant, and even the Warriors of Sunlight can be a little frustrating, because even in Dark Souls Remastered, as popular as it still is, I had a hard time getting summoned into other people's worlds at level 100, which is sort of a PvP level. I mean, up to 120, you're pretty good, but I couldn't get summoned for a long time. However, I want to thank the folks in the Dark Souls Discord server, which I will put a link to in the description below, because they were very, very helpful in summoning me into their worlds and allowing me to summon them for all of these sort of spell locations. Very, very helpful folks and a really friendly community. But that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls Remastered, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll be Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Then be safe.